Okay, it's uh, Adam from Zero Friction Cycling, and this is episode number five, uh, where we're going to be talking about uh, chain wear uh, measuring, so how to check your chain. Now, uh, this is a, a topic that has been covered a lot. You may, if you've been sort of looking at all, you've probably already seen a whole ton of YouTube videos about it, um, read a whole ton of articles about it. Um, and so I guess one of those things I, I don't really need to add to all that sort of that's out there. Some of them have covered it quite well, but some haven't. Uh, I guess I just want to um, give you, I guess, my personal uh, advice on chain wear checking because uh, it can get, uh, this is an area that can get a little overthought in, in my personal opinion that uh, it, it's sort of often taken to levels of complication uh, and layers that it just doesn't need to go. What we need to know with our chain is basically, um, is it at a sort of, a, I guess, what we call a go, no go point for e, you know, when the chain should be replaced. and. It should be something that is very easily, uh, sorry, easy to do, um, something that you can do quickly and easily, uh, frequently, so that you make sure that uh, you don't let your chain run too long. So what happens is um, if you let your chain run too long, and it can be even sometimes a little bit too long, is that the chain elongation wear, and I'll explain a little bit more on what that is, it's, it's basically as your the parts of the chain has a lot of moving parts in it, and as those parts wear, each link can be pulled a little bit further apart than what it was before. So the plates of the chain don't actually stretch, it's literally wear of the parts inside the chain that allow the pins to be pulled further apart um, under load than what they uh, are able to when they're new. And what happens is when the pins are pulled further apart, the rollers then become further apart. And the rollers, instead of when they come around, instead of slotting neatly into the teeth of your cassette and the teeth of your chain ring, um, and then pressing directly forward on the teeth as the rider load comes into play, they will start to hit the tip of the teeth and slide down the face. And so as your chain wears past a certain tolerance point, you are literally then just going to be eating out your cassette teeth and chain ring teeth to suit the new length of the chain. So you can do more wear damage to your cassette and chain rings in say running a chain uh, that's past its wear point in a thousand kilometers as if you rode for 10, 15,000 kilometers or more, making sure you replace your chains before they hit that, that wear tolerance mark. So there is a tolerance point as to when that starts to occur. And it's com commonly referred to as basically 0.5%. So your chain is X length when it's new, and when it is basically 0.5% longer than new, then that's basically classed as your sort of, generally uh, your replacement mark. So that's, I guess, your sort of go, no go point. And uh, there are, I guess, to make it easy, because taking a chain off and hanging it and uh, calculating the measure from sort of you know brand new to what it is now, that's not something that a lot of people um, are, I guess, going to be sort of really capable or comfortable doing, and it's a fair bit of a hassle. So there are nice, easy tools to make this a very quick and easy job, which it should be, and it needs to be, so that you do it frequently. Um, a trap for uh, a lot of cyclists, um, especially those that are on uh, wet lubes and don't do a lot of maintenance, is that uh, your chain wear in the second part of the chain's life is often much faster than the first half. So when you've got a brand new chain, especially if it's a quality chain, the chain actually has uh, a low friction coating. It will have some hardening treatments against wear, such as chrome plating. And your lubricant obviously is gonna start off you know, clean when you first put it on. And over time, it's going to get more and more abrasive, especially if you're not doing the maintenance on it. So what can happen sometimes is that a cyclist will check uh, where their chain is after say 2,000 kilometers or 2,500 kilometers, and everything looks good. And then they check another 2,000 kilometers later and they have completely ripped past the recommended replacement mark because the wear rate in that second half has really shot up. Um, you know, One, the abrasiveness of the lubricant has continued to increase and two, the protections that the chain had initially had been compromised by that time. So you just get a very non-linear wear rate, uh, especially for using the wet lubes. For using your waxes and your chain coating type lubricants, that non-linear wear rate is, is much, much, much lower. So um, it's, it's, I guess, uh, far easier to stay in that uh, sort of safe zone. Uh, you don't need to check as often, but it's just something out of habit you should really just get comfortable with, get used to. Um, so there's a number of ways of I guess chain wear checking um, to see where things are at nice and easy. So I'm gonna run through just quickly, just some of the, uh, I guess the uh, 
traditional old school approaches and, and uh, I guess what I will recommend is the nice easy approach. So your one is taking the chain off and measuring its entire length. Uh, I don't generally recommend that as one, it's a hassle uh, to get it right. Uh, two, most people don't check where the chain is new. Uh, you'd be surprised how many brand new chains uh, just through manufacturing tolerance may start at X percent wear anyway. And if you don't have a new measure, um, you know, it it's just can be a bit all over the place. It can also be affected by temperature. So if you measure a full span of chain because it's metal, you can actually get a different reading on a cold day versus if you measure it on a 35 degree day, stuff like that. So chain wear checkers that measure a short span, it's actually a bit handier in that regards. Another way is um, your digital calipers. So a lot of, um, especially sort of engineering types will say, look, chain wear checkers, um, you don't need to spend your money on those. You can just use a set of digital calipers and measure the distance between the pins. And yes, you can. Um, it's, it is sort of, I guess, relatively easy. So the chain, what's called the pitch, the distance between the pins is 12.7 millimetres. So if you're measuring a span of 10 chain links, that's 127 millimetres. Um, you know, 0.5% on top of that, it basically gives you sort of about a half a mil um, of, uh, of where that you're allowed to have. So um, it's fairly sort of, I guess, easy math. But again, it's one of these things that, and I've tried this before with customers, I could give 10 people some digital calipers and ask them to give me a chain when measure, and I'll probably get five different results. Um, you know, some saying it's fine, some saying I should replace it, and others sort of being in the middle. So again, I mean, you're kind of eyeballing uh, to, you know, you really need about 0.1 millimeter accuracy. Um, and you're doing that manually, steady hands and by eye. And you also need to check multiple sections of a chain. Chains do not wear evenly across the span. Um, it's just something that it doesn't happen. There's no conclusive, um, I guess, answer I can give you as to why it happens, apart from really just the fact that minute differences add up because your chain is just doing millions and millions and millions of articulations and each link has eight separate parts. So just tiny differences across all those tens of millions of articulations add up to different chain wear. So if one section of your chain is at 0.4 and another section is at 0.55, the 0.55 bit is going to be causing uh, damage. So you want to be replacing the chain when a section of the chain, any section of the chain hits that 0.5 mark. And so you want a method that you can check that chain, um, I guess it takes a, at least three to five measures quickly and easily. And that's where digital calipers sometimes, it's just not that quick and easy to do. And if it's not that quick and easy to do, it often just then not gets done. So um, I recommend personally a simple drop-in checker. Uh, there are, are a variety of them out on the market. Um, and they basically will, as we'll demonstrate, they just slot into a chain and you pretty much get a go, no go uh, measure. Uh, a lot of checkers, they do work by pushing uh, the rollers apart, which is a complaint by a lot of those that sort of think about it uh, to quite a few layers. And my, my opinion on that is look, don't, don't stress about that. Whether a chain, say like the Shimano one here, which um, isolates out roller wear, uh, from the pure elongation wear or tools that do not isolate out roller wear versus pure elongation wear. Um, in all honesty, that just, you know, it, it isn't really a factor. Um, the main thing is you want to know that your chain is basically at or near that 0.5% wear mark, whether it's including roller wear or not, uh, and replace that chain nice and early. The earlier you replace your chain, always err on the side of if it's getting close, replace it because uh, you know, even as it starts to get to that, it can be starting to cause wear. So your chain is, I guess, out of your drivetrain components, your chain is by far the most consumable part. And especially important if you have, you know, the higher end group sets, higher tier um, components that are going to cost quite a bit of uh, money if you need to replace them, replace the chain early uh, and just, it'll, it will just keep them, you know, running for chain after chain, especially if you're running a top lubricant that, that's got a low friction interaction between the chain and the teeth. So my personal recommendation, don't think about it too deep. Don't worry about whether or not it's isolating roll aware or not isolating roll aware or getting out your digital calipers or whatnot. You need something that's easy and you can just get to it. The reason why I uh, personally recommend the Shimano, uh, it's, got a, it's a really, really catchy name. Uh, it is the TLCN42. Um, you'll never forget that. So the reason why I recommend this chain wear checker um, over a lot of the others on the market is that um, 
a lot are like this are basically they're sort of cast and finished and they can actually be quite uh, different from batch to batch. So I've literally had uh, this and a number of other brands where, um, you know, a customer will have, you know, say, oh, my chain is at 0.75 and I've only done X kilometres on it or my chain is fine and I've done X kilometres on it. And then when I check it with an actual, um, you know, either accurately measuring with a digital gauge or a groovy digital checker um, or a dependable checker, we find that it's actually nowhere near that. So, and they can literally vary. I've seen them vary by quite a bit just from batch to batch. The, the Shimano checker is, is a laser cut uh, steel. So basically every single one is exactly, and I've measured a ton of them, every single one has always been exactly uh, as it should be, that 0.5 is basically 0.5 uh, and they're quite small and strong so they're not easily bent so some tools if obviously if you bend them again every 0 0.1 of a millimeter counts so you want a tool that's you know perfect every time and is quite strong not not easily bent so this one they, they literally they cost usually sort of most places um, sell them for about $45 a, a good chain wear checker is your absolute best friend for you know ensuring you look after your drivetrain so I'll demonstrate a little bit basically how uh, the recommended one works um, and the other ones pretty much work the same. Uh, this one has nice easy instructions. It's got one and two. So this end I insert number one. So I pick an outer link and I insert that in there. And then we can see that if I, I, I push that in there, checking the bottom span is always good because um, it, it's under tension. So we can see that that slots in. So that has hit the 0 0.5 wear mark. So that is my no-go. So this chain is now, you know, I had to use just a little bit of force to get it in there. So it is literally just at that 0 0.5 mark where I should go right. This, this definitely now needs to be uh, replaced. And I can actually sort of double check that measure with um, my little digital gauge. If I measure a similar spot in the span, I can see that it's coming out at 0 0.41 there. Zero point three seven there, so using a little bit of force, my my chain wear checker at a point four one, so giving me that point five reading equivalent to point four here, that I'm actually really happy with because it's erring on that uh, slightly early stage as opposed to slightly later. Um, if I use this one, so this is a, a different brand. If I check the same span, I can't actually get that to go um, and I'm pushing pretty pretty hard on that uh, and that's the 0 0.5 mark. So this one is what I would say is um, being the opposite of conservative. So this is going to, by the time this measures 0.5, it's, it's uh, yeah, could be a bit past that. So um, that's pretty much the, the, main, the main part. So, and again, if I, I guess I can demonstrate on a chain that's definitely not worn. Um, so this is uh, one that's actually done a good bit of work, but still in, in great shape there. The, the tip of the tool, it's catching a lot of roller. There is just absolutely no way uh, that that's going to go in. Um, we know, I, I can tell by how much roller that's, that's hitting, that that is uh, still in very good condition. I can check that with my uh, digital checker. And I'm looking at 0 0.01, so basically measuring as brand new. So uh, yeah, in short, simple um, tool. This is the one I, I recommend because it's yeah, super accurate and it's something that I, I could quickly and easily check um, five spans of the chain in 30 seconds and I'm done and I know am I good or am I not good. Um, and that is pretty much it. So. Yeah, chain we're checking from zero friction cycling perspective or my perspective is simple, easy, quick. Don't go into a gazillion layers of whether it's isolating roller wear um, or whether it should just be doing digital calipers or measuring the entire span of the chain. Simple drop-in checker is absolutely just the, the quick, easy way to go. So I uh, hope that all makes uh, yeah, uh, sense and yeah, any questions or comments, pop them on the, uh, in the section below. Oh yeah, uh, by the way, uh, thanks for watching and don't forget to uh, like and subscribe to the channel and other youtube -y type things like share with your friends. Uh, so that'll keep you up to date with the latest low friction news and hints and tips. And um, yeah, also put any comments down below and I can uh, try to look at those and uh, take them into account for future episodes.